In 1956, Frank Heider was five years old and living in Audubon, New Jersey. I was four and living in a suburb of Pittsburgh. It would be another 53 years until I really got to know him. But two stories Frank told me that happened to him in that year so long ago reveal much about his subsequent life and art career. I was sitting in his somewhat disheveled office at Moore College when I noticed a carved woodblock of the Serenity Prayer. It sort of reminded me of Frank's technique, and therein lies a tale about how a child's chance encounter with an adult can set them on a course for life. Frank's going to tell you that one. The second story is about how there is never anything straightforward about family life. Since Frank told me this one over the phone, I will have to give it to you secondhand. I hope I can do it justice because, man, it's a doozy. And he had this hanging in his workshop, and so when he died, it came to me. So I just put it up in my office here. <laughs> it's amazing because you're, it relates so closely to what you've done in the last, like, 15 or 20 years. Perhaps. There's a circle in life. Wow, Somehow, that's amazing. Somehow, when you're young, you meet somebody who will have an impact on you later on. I wanted to be an artist ever since I was very little. By the age of five, I was convinced that I wanted to find out about art. I was a gregarious kid who wandered around the little town where we lived in New Jersey. And I always liked to talk to older people. And I came upon this guy who was, to me, fascinating. He lived in a house that was hidden from the street on about two acres of land. It was one of those properties that all the kids thought was haunted. I just sort of wandered up the driveway and found myself in the yard and encountered this guy who was passionately different than anything I had known so far. He sported a big white mustache, which people in the 50s rarely had. He had a snow crop of hair. He dressed with wooden shoes and a very peculiar manner, but he was making a woodcut in his yard. He entertained my questions and, amused by my presence, allowed me to stay and watch him and talk with me. He would give me crayons and things to draw with. He made prints and stuck them on the outside walls of his buildings to test the paints and the qualities of the inks that he was using. I didn't understand at the time, but he was in the process of inventing water-soluble ink. Eventually, he taught me how to make woodcuts, so my entree to the art world was through making woodcuts. I worked for a company, Hunt Manufacturing, which was located in Philadelphia. He was the driving force behind expanding art in the classroom beyond oil-based ink and was pioneering water-based ink, first in woodblock and then for silkscreen. This man, whose name was Henry Frankenfield, was a Pennsylvania Dutch boy who had grown up on a farm, one of 14 children, and had gone to Penn State and got a master's degree in art, and loved art and loved making art, and had fused it with a business career. He was an organic gardener. He grew all of his own food, a vegetarian. The only thing that I knew that he bought and drank from a store was he loved to drink scotch. So all through the day, he would take a, a, a little hit of scotch from time to time. He was my introduction to art. Here goes the second story of Frank Heider as a five-year-old in 1956. He was the youngest of four boys and claims he was on the sensitive side, which instantly made him a target for brotherly hazing. One day he was wandering around his town and came upon a notice in the playground that there was going to be boxing matches for 11-year-olds, 8-year-olds, and 5-year-olds. Five-year-olds encouraged to box in 2009, we find that shocking, but the 1950s were a different time. Who knows, maybe even bear baiting was allowed in those days. Anyway, 
Frank goes home and his benighted Irish mother says, Frankie, I hear there's to be boxing matches on Saturday. Don't you even think about getting involved with that. I absolutely forbid it. But on Saturday morning, the brothers hustled young Frank over to the playground and signed him up. The first two bouts went pretty well, but the third kid was big, tough, and athletic. Plus, he had a father yelling at him that if he didn't beat Frank, he'd kick his ass when they got home. So sensitive Frank actually was feeling sorry for the other kid, but at the same time, he didn't want to let down his brothers. And eventually, Frank won this fight too. He figured his ma would never know about it. But a few days later, a reporter and photographer from the newspaper came over to get the story of the undefeated five-year-old boxing champion. Frank's mom gave him a real whooping once she figured out that he had disobeyed her. Many years later, Frank's mom moved in with Frank and his wife and kids. One day, Frank's oldest son said, Dad, you're a winner. How come you never told us? What are you talking about, Frank asked. Whereupon his son whipped out the 50-year-old newspaper clipping that his very proud mother had apparently kept for all these years. So how was Frank Heider shaped by these two childhood experiences? From the wooden shoe wearing inventor and artist, Frank learned that serious adults can devote their lives to the sacred pursuit of art. And from the boxing story, Frank learned the value of being highly competitive. He learned that win or lose, you're going to get your ass kicked, but it's probably better coming from your mother than your brothers. <laughs>